Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And I'd like to welcome you on this day, which is July 3rd in this hemisphere of the world. And I would like to uh, immediately uh, uh, welcome the, uh, the, the family in the kingdom of Kerry, who has been reunited for the first time in some time, and and uh, this would be uh, Santara's family in uh, the uh, Kingdom of Kerry, Ireland, and I would like to welcome Helena, visiting from from her her new home in New Zealand. So welcome, Helena, and I would like to say welcome to Santara. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, Chris, and thank you, and thank you for the welcome. Helena is actually listening to the show tonight, and it's wonderful that she's here with us. We haven't seen her for nearly two years, so thank you for that. That was nice. Well, you know, you're, to have your whole family reunited again after two years, quite a, quite a, a, a reason to celebrate, my opinion. Yes, today, it is. It is. Uh, today I am going to... Uh, I'm going to bring a tether of information from our last conversation, which uh, was done um, in Ireland and Florida on my part, Uh, but now I'm back here in California, and that tether of information has to do with health and the Kundalini, and the information I would like uh, Santara to present. Uh, But before we get into all of that, I would like to thank everyone for listening. I'd like to thank you who are listening in the archives, you who are listening live. I would like to thank uh, Amelia Centara and her husband John for promoting and, and creating this this uh, vector of information to be given into the populations of the world. I would like to thank Eileen Laurel for the many of the gifts that she contributes to this and many of the private students that I have who are who are exploring and engaging their Kundalini Awakening experience. So thank you, everyone, for listening and involving yourself in this program. Uh, there are there are some other areas that you can uh, partake of if you wish to, to learn more about what we're talking about. Uh, the first area is a website designed and maintained by a gentleman by the name of Glenn Ola from Australia, and that is Kundalini Awakening Systems the num- numeral one dot com. So Kundalini Awakening Systems one dot com. And then there, by the same name, uh, there is a, uh, a Yahoo Groups uh, community, Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Yahoo, Yahoo Groups dot com. And also on Facebook, Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Facebook dot com. Also on Facebook, we have Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. We have a Kundalini Ashram, and we have Kundalini Healing uh, at FacebookGroups.com, but also a Kundalini Healing on YahooGroups.com. So uh, those are some other areas uh, to receive this information. And also on YouTube, uh, we have about 263 videos uh, on the YouTube channel. The channel is Chrism. Uh, zero, and then Kundalini. So Chrism zero Kundalini, and or you can just go Chrism dot Kundalini uh, into YouTube, and and you'll come up with the uh, with the videos. So I welcome you all to explore that area as well. And without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Amelia. Well, okay, thank you, Chrism. But before I do, before I speak about uh, what I wanted to to speak about. And um, I would just like to say that um, all those places that Chrism has mentioned, as well as the work that he does here, the teachings and the information that he gives, um, shows how much um, Chrism gives for people and supports people in a Kundalini awakening. And he works 24-7 doing this. And he does all of this for free. He does not charge at all. And so I'm just going to take this opportunity to again let you know that if you want to support Prism in the work that he does, then I have an address. 
um, a website address that I would like to give you. And on this address, um, you will find a donate button. And um, all donations are received with love and gratitude. And the address is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. That's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And, um, well, what actually happened, what Prism is referring to is um, we had been talking, Prism had been speaking about health and the Kundalini for three of the shows. And last week, I dropped him a line when he was in uh, Florida to let him know that I was experiencing what I call Kundalini vertigo. And vertigo is something that I have experienced really on quite a few occasions um, since my Kundalini awakening. And I realized that we had not mentioned it at all in the Health and Kundalini shows. So I said to Chris, maybe he might refer to that um, again. And he said, I will let you refer to it, Amelia. So I haven't actually prepared anything, but I would just like to say a little bit about vertigo from my own experience. Um, I suppose vertigo is something some people feel has to do with, you know, heights or a fear of heights or that it has to do with inner ear balance. And, of course, it probably has something to do with that. But from my perspective, vertigo isn't just about um, balance. It can also be very visual. For me, vertigo can manifest in two ways. It can be something that I experience inside my head and something that I experience outside my head. In other words, I can be, I can have a dizzy, it's like a dizziness. My head is dizzy and whirring and I am extremely unsteady because of what is going on inside of my head. It's like a spaced out sensation, but it's a whirring as well. And then another kind of uh, vertigo is when my environment outside spins, when I am steady and the environment itself is spinning and shifting and moving. And that creates then an unsteadiness in me. And sometimes the two things combine, and that's what I would call a very severe vertigo. So, for example, the other day I woke up and I my head, I just felt a little bit spaced out, but as I began to put my feet on the ground and walk, I began to feel completely dizzy and disorientated. And sometimes when this occurs, there can be feelings of nausea, and um, it really, it can be quite unpleasant. And sometimes for me, this, this can occur out of the blue, just you know, it doesn't have any references at all. But as on this particular occasion, I feel it was a communication from Kundalini to me, and it was connected into diet and things like that. So sometimes the vertigo comes almost as a communication of when I'm doing, when I need, when I need to pay attention to things, and other times it doesn't. But it is most definitely a Kundalini symptom. And I know that other people have experienced it as well. And so for me, I pay attention and I, I basically, I don't do anything other than that and pay attention to what's happening in my life. And in some cases, I need to surrender some behaviors. And it just passes, it passes in its own time I can't think of anything else to say, Prism. Oh, I no, you're, find you're, it you're going very well. <laughs> um, the, um, many times, the, the uh, a person's uh, uh, fifth chakra will be will be you know going through the infusion of the Kundalini. The, the Kundalini energy is reaching into that chakra. This is after, say, a spinal sweep, uh, but it's going in for the transformative changes that occur. And this will affect a person's inner ear. This will also affect the, uh, the 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 pools of liquid stabilization we have within the inner ear. And the ears are not just about hearing; they're also about balance, and they're also about uh, 
you know, many of the psychic qualities that, are, that occur in, in conjunction with a Kundalini awakening. And as you go through the transformation, you may indeed uh, experience uh, what what people would refer to as vertigo or dizziness or the inability to kind of uh, match up what you normally would have been doing at that time with the current status quo within the Kundalini awakening. This all comes together. It all corrects itself. It's not something that you have to worry about forever and a day. It's just part of the transformation process. And so I think it's well worth mentioning. Uh, you know, people who say walk a tightrope, you know, say you're a circus performer and you walk a tightrope and, well, okay, you know, you, now you've had the kundalini come up and your fifth chakra is being worked on and, you know, you might find it a little difficult sometimes to walk that tightrope. Always use a net. <laughs> like you're doing it that way. So, so yeah, your balance can be affected. Your the the dizziness can be affected. Your your the the levels of experiential vertigo can be can be experienced, and many different levels too. I think Amelia you know, Santara gave you some very good examples of some of the levels that she's experienced, and yet also realize that your levels will be unique to you and your experience, but may share some of the some similar qualities. So thank you. Center for, for for the gift of your experiences. And you're very welcome. And I just just I do think it's important to say as well about the visuals because that is something that doesn't always happen, but when it does, it can be extremely challenging. Uh, when the visual things shift and move in front of your eyes as well. So it's eyes as well as ears, I see, as well as, or so it was for me, anyway, this time. Especially especially if you find yourself driving, and then all of a sudden, you, you know, your visuals start to move around. It can become devastating. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the eyes, ears, and even some of the other uh, uh, coordination uh, senses that we have, there can be a time when it becomes a, a little bit distorted, don't be afraid of that. Don't think that this is a, a, a forever symptom. It, it may happen a few times, then it may fade. It may happen a few more than, than a few times, but it will eventually fade. It's a, trans, it's a transformation. And so typically in a transformation sequence, you have a start, you have a middle, and you have an end. The sequence of time that that transformation occurs can be a very, very long. Uh, and the, you know, it can also be very, very short. Amelia? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting the Irish noise. Oh, are you? Okay. Uh what can I do? I can't do anything. I'm gonna okay. put you I'm gonna put you on hold here just a second there. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay, everybody. Uh so yeah, this is this is important uh uh subjects that, that Amelia has brought up with regard to visual vertigo and and you know, any of the perceptual vertigos that can occur within the Kundalini, uh, being balanced is only one of them. Uh, a visual vertigo uh, experience can be seen as something that is shifting, as, as, as Amelia Centaur suggested, that is shifting what it is you're seeing just ever so slightly to the point maybe maybe bending it in a certain way. Um, it's very important to know, especially if you're driving, operating heavy machinery, uh, and having the Kundalini. And, and, you know, people who are driving and who are operating heavy machinery are often having the Kundalini. So, so this is, I'm not just saying this. This is important stuff for you to pay attention to. Um, the other half of this, uh, or the other portion of this uh, show is, is uh, dedicated to radiance. When a person receives the Kundalini through the transformation that has occurred by the inception of Kundalini, a level of light is emitted from the Kundalini itself through the bones, through the flesh, through the blood, and outside of the human being. This radiance is often seen as a as a, a opaque goldish glow or a patina of gold uh, that a person 
uh, may exhibit who is having the kundalini. Uh, when you think of your teacher or another person that you know that has kundalini, like, say, Amelia Centara, uh, you listen to her words and you, you maybe you meet her the next day and, and then you go home and your memory, you remember her and yet you remember a patina of gold or, or a patina of shimmering silver. This would be a your your mind interpreting uh, the Kundalini radiance that Amelia Centara is emitting. Uh, this you know, is the same with me. When people think of me after they've met me or after I've sat on their furniture or things like that, uh, you know, they recognize that there is a gold energy that is left on that furniture or about me as they see me. And this is this is natural to the Kundalini. You know, many, many, many Kundalini people will have this and it's it's not to be seen as a as an affliction and yet nor is it to be seen as any any great exaltation either. It is a fact of the energy. It is a a an artifact, if if one can use that word, of the radiant. The radiance itself is, is, a, is a real thing. And for those who are having kundalini, you know, you can feel the beginning of the development of the halo. The halo, which is the corona of extreme energies that go from the neck and over the head. These, these are the beginnings of the radiance phenomena. And they will flow throughout the entire energetic field of the individual, and this is where people who don't have the kundalini may begin to sense its presence, the presence of the radiance field. Now, the, the energetic footprint of a kundalini person can be quite large. Uh, a city block is not out of the question. A mile in diameter is not out of the question. It just depends on the person, uh, the level of surrender they have, the karmic disposition they have with regards to having the kundalini at that time in their life, doing what they do, okay? Um, it's a tremendous thing. It's, it's no small matter having the kundalini, and yet you as an individual, uh, shall we say, ego-based uh, uh, psychological entity, uh, at, at, at the early points along the path, you're not required to... To be, shall we say, responsible for the Kundalini radiance that emanates from you, uh, and I and I say that because in the context of the radiance, people who walk through the radiance partake of a special uh, energetic field that will influence their thoughts, influence their actions, influence their health, influence their feelings and therefore influence their lives in many, many different ways, far away from the physical location of the Kundalini awakened person. Okay. Uh, it is, this is the purview of the Kundalini radiance itself. You have to remember that Kundalini is itself an intelligent energy. And the amplification of this, uh, I'll call it a divine intelligence, is given uh, through its marriage to the, the physical human body system. So even though you may not realize that you're having this really great effect on Mary Jo Lewis, you know, three quarters of a mile away from you, the Kundalini knows. Matter of fact, the Kundalini knows exactly what Mary Jo Lewis needs to experience and it's giving it to her. Your responsibility is to be able to control your thoughts and the emotions that you put behind your thoughts. Control the way you think and what your inner dialogue is saying. Because as your radiance flows out from within, from within you to outside of you, so do some of the particles and potentials of your thoughts and emotions travel with it. And because people are walking through that radiance field, if they 
happen to have a matching energetic issue of, you know, say, anger at uh, somebody cutting them off on the road or, you know, road rage <laughs> plays a big deal in our society these days. Uh, not so much, you know, everywhere, but here in the States it does, and I know it does in the, in, in, the, in Russia and, you know, pretty much everywhere except perhaps Ireland. Uh, <laughs> road rage can occur. And so it's very important to begin to control the way you think, how you feel about people that are, say, challenging to you. You do this as part of your own personal maintenance within the Kundalini anyway. These are part of the safety protocols, forgiveness, tolerance, uh, patience, compassion, you know, love, selfless service, all of these qualities are part of the individual maintenance of the person having kundalini anyway. But with regard to the radiance, as much as you can, adopt a, a, a pattern of forgiveness and love. And I don't mean sticky, sugary, syrupy, sweet love. We, you know, that can get old, believe me, really fast. Uh, I'm talking about love of of seeing will used correctly. So, you know, uh, choices made that are based in love uh, that 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 show that a person is responsible and caring and helpful, and 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 at the same time allowing other people the freedom of choices that they need to need to have and to make. Uh, love is is not always about romance. You know, the radiance of love is, is often about courage, bravery. It's often about sacrifice. It's often about nurturance. All of those things all wrapped up. And these are just the tip of the iceberg of what the radiance of love involves. And so, so really, uh, understand this. Understand this, that, that as you are within, so is it done without or outside of you. As within, so without, as without, so within. And uh, to, to continue that equation, as above, so below, as below, so above. Uh, I'm going to bring Centara back on here. Hello, Centara. Hello. Is the noise hey, gone? Hey. Yep, the noise is gone. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so uh, I understand that, that Ireland doesn't have road rage like sharks. It doesn't have sharks. <laughs> no, I, I totally hold. We do not have sharks, but we do have road rage, unfortunately. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we are not unique in that way, unfortunately. Well, well, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you if you could if you could keep an eye on the chat room there. And if anybody has a question that they want to ask, that they can feel free to, to either ask it there or, uh, everybody, you can call 347-934-0026. For any question you have about your kundalini, you can call 347-934-0026. You can call it here in the United States uh, or you can call it uh, from another country. Uh, you might want to add a zero one in front of the three four seven. So, so I would appreciate uh, Centaur if you would be able to to monitor that because mine's not coming up. I'm not getting the chat. Ah, you're not seeing it. Okay, I will do that. Of course, yeah. So, as we continue our conversation about Kundalini radiance, I want everybody to understand that this is a tactile thing. Uh, people feel it. Not only do people feel it, but animals and insects and fish feel it. They feel it and they will respond to it. And they will typically respond to it in a positive way or in a way that is positive for their species. So, for instance, you may not recognize that a, a positive uh, symptom for a, a shall we say, a, a wasp, is to wave its, you know, its uh, abdomen up and down. You may not, you may not understand that, but that would be one of the positive symptoms for a wasp to, 
to express positivity, uh, to radiance. Another thing is that the, that's, well, I'll just continue with the wasp. The wasp is a lot smarter than we give it credit for, and it will read what we need to see as positivity, and it will often mimic what it is we need to see, we as human beings need to see as a positivity, and will adopt that, that expression. Um, other animals, like birds, will land on you. Butterflies will land on you. Bees will land on you. Don't, don't kill any of them. They're not landing on you because they're attacking. They're landing on you because of the kundalini radiance. Remember always to practice ahimsa, A-H, A as in apple, H as in Helena, I as in iPod, M as in Mary, S as in Sam, and A as in Amelia. Practice ahimsa. Do no harm. Do not kill. And even when that, you know, when when a wild creature lands upon you, I've, I've had snakes crawl up under my shoes and birds land on the hands and bugs and butterflies and you name it. You know, they all want to come close because they all feel the, the creative matrix of divinity that comes with, with Kundalini divine radiance. This is the power of the divine. Which is why you, as an individual, you may have various levels of, of feeling it at all. That's it's emanating from you. Uh, because it's not for you to feel so much. It is an effect. It is, it is so, oh, let's see. Uh, it is beyond your senses, for the most part. Uh, the radiance isn't there to stimulate your awe or your wonderment. It is there to to affect a divine agenda through your kundalini here upon this world. So that is what it does. As you stand in the grocery line, as you stand next to a person at the hospital, as you as you uh, sit in your car, as you do any of the things that you do in your daily doings of life, uh, so will this radiate emanate from you and do its work upon other people. And we're, I must say that it's typically a very, very, very positive level of work that is being done. Let me give you a difficult situation. A man has kidnapped a, a young woman and is, and is, you know, torturing her and having his way with her. Uh, and he himself is being tortured by entities that are causing him to to lose himself in levels of violence and rage and self hatred, uh, which is which is often quite necessary before a person can even do those those types of uh activities. Uh, somebody with Kundalini may pull up in their car next to the house that this is taking place in. And all of a sudden that woman is allowed to let to go and the guy doesn't know why and the girl doesn't know why but what they both know is that it's happened this is the type of thing it will change a person's demeanor towards love towards the sanctity of life towards the expression of honesty and the and the understanding and 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 honoring of truth towards the validation of grace, the grace of love, the grace of courage, the grace of truth, the grace of of uh, being able to stand on your own two feet. Okay, self-reliance. All these things can be uh, what's the word uh, increased by virtue of standing within the radiance field of a kundalini awakened person. Now, yes, yes, this 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 kundalini awakened person, they need to have had uh, a spinal sweep. They need to pretty much be non-resistant to what the kundalini is giving them to to uh, to experience. You know, there are, there are certain requirements for people that that they must partake of in order to 
to open themselves so tangibly and and selflessly into the kundalini. You can't be, you know, having kundalini and hating every minute of it, saying, oh, damn you, kundalini, leave me alone, I hate you, da 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 You can't be in, in levels of resistance. First of all, be, because your 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 emotional attitude and your and the energetics that you're developing within that kind of a of a response is going to be very detrimental to people around you. Okay, so your radiance is is, is greatly limited by the action of the kundalini itself. Remember the intellectual properties of the kundalini itself. It knows you better than you know you. Okay, I'll say it again. The kundalini knows you better than you know yourself. But that doesn't mean that it makes all the choices for you because it knows you. Ah, well, I know Mr. Grissom, and, and so therefore I make all the choices for him. No, no, no. You have your work to do as well. You need to come in to a recognition of the kundalini. You need to be at peace with this, at, in love with this, working towards this. Um, if you're like a private student of mine, then, then you're doing everything that you're being given to do, you know, within the idea of a lesson or a, a practice or things of that nature. You're doing everything that, you're, that, you're, that you should be doing, that I have given you as an instruction, and so on and so forth. The, the Kundalini does know you better than you know yourself, and yet you still have your work to do. Your work in this lifetime is to, is to blend yourself and change your ego to the point where the blending of yourself and your Kundalini can be at its finest. This is where people experience levitation, and this is where people experience some of the some of the greater gifts of Kundalini, which you'll never see demonstrated in front of you. Uh, you know, remember the the admonition against self-aggrandizement. Uh, people see you do any of your great gifts. Uh, you know, they're going to want to vivisect you and sacrifice you for science. So if you don't want to go that route, believe me, it's, that's not a happy place. So so understand this and, and realize that the radiance of the Kundalini is a another skin, so to speak. It's an energetic skin that you know can be about a diameter of a mile around you. I've done a video that I have yet to post, and it's taken at the uh, a crater site in uh, Arizona. And this this is, uh, I think it's Crater National Monument or something like that. It's, it's on privately held land, but they built a big visitor center there. And it's, you know, it's the, the family that owns it is, you know, is, is really into to, uh, teaching people about, you know, what science considers the uh, origins of, of asteroids to be and whatnot. Uh, this was a meteor uh, that, that had a sizable uh, diameter in it, according to uh, some databases. It uh, slammed into the world a little over 50,000 years ago. Anyway, it left this beautiful, beautiful, deep crater in the middle of the Arizona desert, and it's there. You can see it. It's right off of I-40, uh, about eight, yeah, about maybe 20 miles to the east, of Tucson. No, I'm sorry, Flagstaff. About 20 miles to the east of Flagstaff on Highway 40. You'll see it, you know, lots of signs out there. See the crater, that type of thing. And uh, it's very, very informative. And the reason why I bring it up here right now is when you see that crater, you see a, a Kundalini radiance pattern. That's That's what I'm given. With regards to, you know, I've always had a hard time, you know, I, you know, I, a city block, I'd say, you know, mile in the circumference, da, da 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 But when you see it exemplified so nicely, as that crater has done, then you understand more. 
and let that let that accentuate your understanding of how important it is to control your emotions. And and what I mean by that, you know, it's just like, oh, so I can't ever be unhappy because I'm oh, I can't ever be angry. Oh, I can't ever be this or that because it's going to make other people feel that way. No, I'm not saying that. Totally. I am saying that you need to get your ego uh, angers under control, your your desire for revenge, uh, and you know, coupled with that, your desire or or the the temptation to hold a grudge against a person that has harmed you, and especially against a person who has harmed you for no reason. They just wanted to harm someone that day. And you happen to be available. I'm going to suggest that you do not hold a grudge and you do not look for revenge against that person, that you walk in forgiveness. You forgive that person. And therefore, thereby relieving yourself of any kind of energetic uh, attachment to that individual. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you not going into levels of, oh, I have kundalini, so I'm so smart. I'm so intelligent. Um, Nobody can hold a candle to me. My gosh, I am just the most brilliant person in the world, and, and, and so on and so forth. So you control that kind of ego self-aggrandizement. Uh, you, can, you control wanting to control the choices of other people. Okay, a lot of us are control freaks, and so we we always know the best way, and so therefore our way is the best way, and any other way should be the highway. And so, you know, we need to control that, and we get bitter if people don't uh, follow what it is we advise them to do. So, yeah, you know, you need to control that. These are the issues that that come upon a person. And these come upon a person in in amplified ways at times. Not all the time, but sometimes they do. They come, and and your your sense of outrage can be extreme. Your sense of sense of personal validation can be extreme. Okay, so be very very aware. It's mostly the the ego rationales and the ego based uh, e- e- equations of emotional response that I'm talking about when it comes to to controlling the way you think. Most of us aren't always, you know, right behind. You know, wait a minute, let me back up on that. Lots of us are not always in a depressive state of mind. I have to say, though, that before my kundalini came up, I was pretty continuously depressed. Uh, didn't really feel I fit in very well here at all. And even after the awakening, you know, came up, then I knew I didn't fit in very well here at all. <laughs> it was no, it was, there was no question. And so this can this can lead a person into levels of depression, and this depression uh, can be radiated outward from their body. And you can even see people that have just a regular, you know, six foot envelope of en- energy around them. And when they're in a bad space, boy, you can feel it. You can see it. Your body responds to it. You take a step away. You know, you, maybe you move out of line next to that person. Let them go ahead of you or whatever. You can feel it. And so these are the types of things that I'm talking about when I say control your thoughts. And I do reiterate, control your thoughts. It's very important to do so. As best you can, walk in the footsteps of St. Francis of Assisi. And this was a man who walked in forgiveness. And if you look at any of the pictures that they have of him from the 10th century, birds are landing on him, you know, butterflies are landing on him. What do you think's going on with old St. Francis? Kundalini is what's going on with St. Francis. They just didn't know what else to call it. They called it uh, Holy Fire of Christ or, you know, the something. Um uh, Anybody that may have an, uh, a question about their uh, Kundalini awakening experience, uh, feel free to call 347 934 
There with is Reagan. a question. Prison. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Hi. Can you hear me? There are three questions from Sadhvi. Will I ask them now, or do you want to wait? That's fine. That was good. Okay, so the three questions. So it is, are the five bodies the sheets or layers that yoga talks about? The well, next one is, do no, eat? Let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me answer this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Sabi. Hello. Thank you for listening. Uh, and thank you for asking a question that many, many, many more will, will appreciate uh, beyond this one day. Uh, the, yeah, the shitis or the purushas, I believe, is what the Sanskrit term is. Uh, purushas, uh, the, the, the sheets that that you know, I, you know, when you read it from the Sanskrit, you kind of get the idea that uh, that these these sheets are covering the person uh, outside to in, but I see them more as an inside to out. They are part of what is a human being is. Uh, the five bodies uh, are not, they are not taken directly from the Purushas or from the, uh, or from the, the these um, uh, layers or sheaths that you're speaking of. But there are similarities. I can't, I can't disregard it. Uh, uh, when when I, when the, the safeties were being written, uh, the five bodies kept coming up to me, and you know, and then you know, you know, and then you know, with the addition of the five Tibetans, well, five, five always kept coming up. Five, five, five. One, two, three, four, five. You know, and, and you follow it up the, to the fifth chakra and all of these things, and and you begin to realize that the other two that make the seven and actually the other four that make up the nine, you know, those are not strictly physical. And so those have a metaphysical and physical uh, identity. And so they're not included in many of the ancient writings as a strictly physical phenomena, whereas the five are. You have the five senses, you have the five chakras, you have you know, all of these five scenarios. With the, uh, with the sheets, uh, there are similarities. Uh, I, I won't. Uh, I won't uh, deny that. But I, I, they were not designed to following the Purushas. I, I looked up Purusha later on. I had the word kept coming into my head, and I had no idea what Purusha meant. And uh, still, it's not a very clear thing. Uh, with even you get so many different uh, uh, translations. Uh, but uh, the sheaths and the, and the five bodies do have similarities, and uh, and if you're following a Sanskrit model, then yeah, use use the five sheaths as a way of a, of focusing your five body expression uh, towards a, a greater harmonizing uh, attitude with the Kundalini. I, I hope that helps, uh, Sadhvi. Okay, so the next question is, do each of the five bodies we do in our Kriya represent one of these bodies? Do each of the five bodies we do in our Kriya represent one of these bodies? Do each of the five bodies we do in Kriya that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, but let me let me just. There are kriyas for each of the five bodies. Um, when you have a physical kriya, uh, you won't necessarily have an emotional kriya uh, at the same time. You may have that emotional kriya later on, maybe a few months down the road. Uh, maybe the uh, the equation for your particular kundalini expression allows you to have the physical kriya first and then the emotional kriya second and then the, the mental kriya third and then the egotistical kriya fourth, right? Uh, so they are not always uh, happening together and and yet they do 
also happen together and in combinations. So you'll have a physical Kriya, and then you'll have a mental Kriya that has been stimulated by that physical Kriya, which has been, re- you know, received with grace through your Kundalini. And then, you know, just to put some sugar on top of that, they'll sprinkle in an emotional Kriya on that mental Kriya. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, many, many permutations happen with regards to the gifting of Kriyas. Kriyas are, just for for people who don't know what that term means, Kriyas are the the physiological response or the emotional response, the mental response, the psychological response, or the spiritual response of kundalini energetic stimulation. Uh, As the kundalini infuses the body, starts to change the body, the body often responds with automatic movements. These automatic movements are called kriyas in the Sanskrit terminologies. These spontaneous movements or automatic movements are carried over into spontaneous emotions, spontaneous emotions of love and of and of uh, and of joy and of and sometimes of anger and fear. You know, whatever it is, the kundalini, who knows you better than you know yourself, feels that you need to to express at that time. Um, So when you have a Kriya, you can have spontaneous harmonic Kriyas at the same time or just the singular Kriya. And it'll be up to the individual to determine what is occurring. Is it, am I getting a, a, you know, a a three-part harmonic uh, Kriya, I'm getting a physical Kriya, a mental Kriya, an emotional Kriya at the same time? Or is it just a, a a physical kriya and an emotional kriya into two two part harmony. So yeah, I mean they can they can respond singularly or in numbers or in groups. Depends on what is needed for that individual. Is there another question? Thank you, Chris. And, yeah, and the final one was when we have our kundalini sweep, is the five bodies all included in this sweep? When we're having a kundalini sleep? Sweep? Sweep? Oh, when oh, we oh. have our kundalini sweep. <laughs> a spinal, a kundalini spinal sweep, sweep, right? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Is the five bodies all included in this sweep? Yes, yes. Absolutely. A spinal sweep is typically all inclusive of all five bodies. Yes, yes, and the body, the back will arch, the the eyes will go up and in, um, the mind will be stimulated, the the sensory functions will be acute. Um, yeah, you you pretty much get it across the board as all chakras open up and and receive the the strong flow of kundalini up the spine and out the top of the head. Absolutely. Uh, what what typically happens, though, is you don't get an individuated experience. Uh, you have uh, an ultimate experience, an, an experience of, of oh, it's, it's, it's getting into areas that, that words, I have to choose my words carefully because these are divine areas hard to describe yeah nirvana comes to mind um uh, some uh, some of the sanskrit words you have a a unity experience you are unified with god you are unified with all creation you are unified with goddess you are unified with everything everything and it's all good. It's all good. It is all goodness. Just humans acting out their karma, the karma that they've made in other times and the karma they're making right now in a in a beautiful symphony of spiritual evolution. And yes, there are some very difficult areas there, but when you're having the spinal sweep, you you're it's like an overview of the entire evolutionary 
schematic for the entire species. And so you're not you're not cherry picking. You're seeing the whole thing, and uh, that whole schematic is a schematic of love and of joy and of spiritual evolution towards the divine that that we human beings are continuously in the process of of making. So that's that's the best I can answer that one. Okay, thank you, Chris. And there are no other questions in the chat room at this time, anyway. If there are, I'll interrupt you again. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Sadvi, for asking such excellent questions. So, so as we begin to control our ego-based, shall we say, our our, our primal uh, thoughts. Um, Kundalini will harness our positivity, our steadfastness, our discipline, our compassion, our uh, knowingness, and it will broadcast those qualities within itself as a as a filament of energy within the much greater spectrum of, of filament energy uh, that is within the kundalini and it broadcasts itself and ourself into the environment uh, at about a mile radiance. And that's side to side and up and down too. Don't forget that. Side to side, up and down, a great sphere of radiance. So when when I uh, when I post that video, uh, you'll kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. Very very powerful things, very very powerful things. Which is why not everybody gets to have this in the world. Because you're not, you know, they're they're not quite ready yet. They're all going to get ready. They're all getting ready. This is what they're doing. But it, you know, different different times for different folks. That's what it is. We. We have to meet our karma uh, in other ways as well. So, as you recognize your radiance, now the, one of the things that I'm going to I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. I'm going to go back to the to the uh, halo. The halo is. I have to go back even uh, the the seventh and sixth chakra. Uh, the forehead chakra and the top of the head chakra, the fontanelle. Um, these represent divine gateways on the human being. Um, the thousand petaled lotus is what the uh, the Sanskrit people called it, still call it. Uh, but there's a lot more than a thousand petals. A lot more. And these these micro chakras uh, radiate divine currents of energy. And they do this not only through, uh, say, an inside-to-outside formula, but they also do it through the sixth chakra, which is really hard to explain. That uh, The sixth chakra is kind of like a universe of its own. Uh, kind of translating visual stimulus into metaphysical reality. Just a really bad way of of describing it with words. But you will feel, you will feel at the, uh, at, at your temples, you'll begin to feel a pressure. And that pressure will will expand into a ring around your head. So the ring around your head will go from your temples to your third eye, uh, and then all the way back around your head, and it'll feel like you're wearing a band around that portion of your head. This is in similar a similar feeling to the golden helmet, by the way. Very similar feeling, except you have more of a of an uh, of a of a of a expressive uh, temple based feeling than you do with the with the golden helmet. And once again for those who are 
who are not familiar with the golden helmet is uh, what a person can feel who is who is approaching Kundalini activation. Uh, the uh, uh, it, fo- it will follow the hairline in, a, in a, almost an exact way of a of an old Roman golden helmet or an old Roman helmet. The reason why they call it the golden helmet is because it's Kundalini, it's divine. Uh, it'll follow the hairline, even if you're bald. It'll follow where the hairline would have been. Okay. And uh, so what I'm saying is that that sensory perception is similar to what you get with the halo. The halo is natural to all Kundalini people. It's a, you know, everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. They get it in differing qualities because of the level of their acceptance or or resistance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's not all about one way. Uh, so as your halo grows, uh, you begin to feel a spiky quality. Uh, if you look at the Statue of Liberty, look at a picture of the Statue of Liberty, and you'll see that she has spikes coming out of her headband, so to speak. Check it out. Go Google her right now. Especially you listening on the archives. Google the Statue of Liberty, get a picture of her up there, and you'll see those spikes coming out of her forehead. Well, that is a halo. Except they don't end. They don't end right there. They continue into the cosmos. The halo is a, is a concentrated uh, movement of energy uh, from a Kundalini awakened person into the environment. The halo is one expression of that. And it permeates the kundalini expanded aura. It's the sun within the sun, so to speak. And your heart does the same thing. Your heart is the sun. It's another sun within a within a sun. Um, the heart has a level of radiance that is tremendous. Okay, but I'm going to move to that just in a second here. Uh, so the forehead and the spikes of energy that come out of it, they don't just come out of the forehead. Literally, the spikes are the entire top of the head. And these are big spikes. These spikes go on beyond what you, beyond that mile diameter. Okay, the mile diameter is, is the kundalini radiance that comes off of the, the seven chakras. Uh, the sixth and the seventh, it comes from a different place. It, it is transphysical. It's transphysical. So, it, you know, it, it's transdimensional, transphysical. It goes straight from physicality to divine consciousness. I, I know that's a big leap for people to take. They don't even like me to say the word divine because it implies religion. But it is. It's of a divine quality, and it just keeps going and going and going and going. And and with your kundalini senses, you can follow it as it goes. But your mind will not be able to uh, process what it is and experience it, except very, very small minutia of experience. You can follow that those radiance beams up, but don't expect your petty little human brain to be able to process what's being given there. But you can hear the frequencies. And some of you, some of you may hear music, celestial music, or a uh, the voice of a of a of a guidance. You may hear that. Um with the heart, I'm gonna to move to the heart. The heart has a very different radiance. It is a radiance of love. It is in a way it is the most powerful radiance on the physical planet. Uh the heart is, a, is an activation station and equation all of its own. I was reading the posts of a, one of the groups, uh, the Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups, and a gentleman by the name of Rudy posted a uh, quote by uh, 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 Maharsha. And uh, Maharsha teaches that you know, in, in his experience, or actually he's quoting the Upanishads, these these mystical, spiritual writings of the Sanskrit people, that the heart is really where everything takes place. 
you know, everything emanates from the heart, and, you know, he quotes different uh, writings to support that theory, and, and I won't disagree with them. Well, actually, I do have to kind of disagree with them, because I felt it come from the base of the spine and go up to the heart, and then from the heart go up through the throat, through the forehead, and into the top of the head, so I know that there are other uh, dynamics that maybe aren't being addressed within the quotation. But I like the quotation because I like the importance that he places upon the heart chakra. And there are actual heart activations of the kundalini that can take place. Uh, you, you, you feel the love to such a degree that it explodes out of your chest. Now, don't think that you're going to see, you know, your body is going to explode. You're going to see, you know, pieces of yourself fly across the room. I'm not talking about that kind of an explosion. I'm talking about a very, very, very strong feeling of love and blessings and grace and beauty and joy, a, a jubilance of all those qualities magnified a thousand times or more. That's coming out of the heart chakra. This is this is a you know this is a real deal. I've had this. This is an amazing thing, and, and other people have had it too. It, but it is not the only way. It is not the only combination of events that can occur. However, the heart has its own level of kundalini radiance. And this radiance is what is often called upon when we are given to heal or to pray for the healing of another person. Um, a dear friend of mine just passed. Her name is Brenda Jones. Lovely, lovely endlessly wonderful woman. It was very helpful to me uh, in, in the early parts of my life, and a good friend of my dear mother. And uh, so, of course, I was speaking from the heart to her as she passed. And I was going to her from the heart and visiting her from the heart as she lay in a, in a, in a you know, in in her transitions position uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away. You see, the, you tr radiance travels. You can travel a beam of radiance, and all it takes is really, you have to have the radiance, first of all, that you have the intention and the prayer and the meditation, and you can go, you can follow it. Part of the whole, uh, um, what's that term, uh, by location type of scenario. You can you can go, you can follow it. Uh, love is a very, very strong radiance. And you'll see that the plants respond very well to a person who is radiating a lot of love. And once again, the animals, the plants, uh, people, babies, small kids, older people, you don't even have to speak the same language and they know that you're a loving person. Okay. So the love uh, of, a, of a kundalini radiancing person from the heart is very strong. I, I've mentioned in other in other uh, conversations that I'll get pulled off of a freeway by the heart. The kundalini takes me by the heart radiance and pulls me there, pulls me to the hospital. And there, you know, and, and I go. I don't resist. I go. And I get there, and I and, and I am led to go exactly where I need to go, which is, you know, usually where one family member or someone who needs that blessing to be given is, is sitting or suffering or doing whatever. Okay. So the heart radiance is a huge radiance, a beautiful radiance. Uh, lots of the performers, when you see them, and you'll say it, you'll, you'll hear people, the phrase, you know, it says, oh, Speak from the heart or sing from the heart. That's what they're talking about. Let that heart radiance accentuate what it is you're saying. Now, there's, there are some differences between the heart radiance and this, the, uh, the uh, unity radiance of the seventh chakra or the crown chakra. But the, unif the unifying radiance of the crown also includes the heart, whereas the heart may not include the crown. Okay. 
Kundalini determines how this is to be measured out. And that can be sometimes a hard a hard thing for people to to understand is they have this really smart, amazing energy in them controlling how the energies are doled out and, and received and given. And I just want you to, to maybe see it as an angel. If it's easier for you to 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 envision a, an angel sitting on your shoulder telling you, yes, you have kundalini now, you've done very well, nice going, here's the work. <laughs> here's, here's what we got to do now. Okay, That's fine. I'm all good for that. I'm not so much great for entities. For those of you who know that, you know, I don't appreciate the levels of interference that entities cause in a person's kundalini awakening experience, except to to isolate an individual's own power, strength, and and, uh, and, and personal validation. Uh, so I don't want you to create an entity or invite an entity in and say, I, I am the Archangel Aloysius, and I am here to control you now that you have the Kundalini. You can just walk away from that one. Okay, and they're out there, believe me. They call themselves Archangel Michael, Uriel, Galadriel, <laughs> Brodo. I mean, they'll call themselves anything that they think will get your interest. Okay, so you can just ignore all of those. Uh, definitely ignore them all. And with the radiance, uh, you're not. A, you don't get to hurt, but you do get to help. And that is not a decision that you will always be able to make. That is, a, that is a decision that the kundalini itself will make. It will determine how that goodness is to be given. And it may give you, it may give you something physical to do with it, say with the radiance, because, you know, when you start seeing your energy, you're going to see energy coming out of your hands, out of your fingertips, out of your mouth, out of your toes, your toe tips, your knees. The chakras that you can see, you'll see the energies coming out of there. You'll see the the hairs on your body are like little mini um, grasses. I'll just use the grass because if I say serpent, it just freaks people out. So little, little tender, beautiful, lovely, sparkly blades of grass. And uh, waving around, you'll see the energy emitting off of that. And... Uh, that is your radiance. That sparkle. Uh, some people are mentioning on some of the communities about the glistening. The glistening is not the radiance. The glistening is your sixth chakra viewing of life as it is. Uh, bringing into context uh, ultra ultra frequencies of of energy. So frequencies that only accompany Kundalini uh, will begin to assert themselves into your sensorial uh, visual input. And that input will begin, I mean, you'll see a frosting of light over everything. And everything is individuated. You have this individuated unity of everything, every leaf, every vein in a leaf, every cell in a leaf, you're just, you know it and you feel it and you see it and it's embossed with this frosting of of light, of, of scintillating, sparkling sometimes light. And, and uh, this is it's just another aspect of the Kundalini. Another aspect of the Kundalini. Um, I would like to uh, invite anybody that has a question to call in at 347-934-0026. Uh, uh, Amelia, are there any other questions? No, no other questions at this time. We have a lot of listeners in the chat room, though. So hello to everybody there. And if they have any questions, I will pass those on to you if they type them in. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, I, you know, I would love to be able to see you guys there, you guys and gals there. And I, I apologize. It's not coming through on the iPad for whatever reason. 
it's in that constant loading mode. Um, but thank you for joining me on this day. And, and uh, the TBA, I asked Amelia to put this as a to-be-announced uh, show because I, I wasn't sure until the last minute what the Kundalini in me wanted to talk about. Uh, various things were being run around with another show on just the health or another show on something different. Um, and so, I, you know, it was. I, yeah, plus I've been doing a lot of traveling. I, uh, as some of you know, I, I spent the last two weeks with Eileen Loro, uh, moving her from California to Florida. And, uh, and I just arrived back in California uh, yesterday. And, uh, yeah, so I wasn't, I didn't get a real clear uh, fix on what was to be the topic, and so I apologize if the TBA, uh, you know, threw anybody off. Oh, radiance can flow upon the visual system. Not what I was just talking about with the glistening. That's completely different. With the glistening, you're you're seeing uh, greater levels of energetic frequency. It's 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 a simple scene. It's just it's greater levels of visual input. With the radiance, you're embossing or infusing your radiance with a thought or an emotion or or something of that nature. So you can flow an intention upon the Kundalini radiance with its permission, of course, uh, or it won't work. It won't stop you. It just won't work. Um, you can flow that radiance to another person. So this is how you do a long-distance healing. As you see the person and you flow that love to them, you flow that wholeness and that health to them, you flow that that love and the grace to them if they're transitioning like, uh, um, you know, Brenda Jones was doing. And she did pass, and she passed wonderfully. Such a beautiful, wonderful person. And her passing uh, was a reflection and is a reflection of the person that she has been. And so you can do that long-distance healing. It is not impossible because there's nothing uh, that the flow of energy uh, cannot get to. If you can see it, the radiance will go to it. If you cannot see it, the radiance may go to it anyway. Okay. When I give Shakti pots on the equinox and the solstice, so no, I invite everybody. There's a uh, an autumnal equinox uh, Shakti pot being prepared for 2013. Uh, this will take place September 21st, 2013. Uh, this is the equinox, and um, uh, to sign up for that Shakti pot, you go to the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups or Chrism Kundalini Shakti pot on Facebook. And you go there and you uh, join the group, number one, and then you make a declaration that you want to receive the Shakti pot and that you get permission for the scatter field and all of that. And uh, then you place your picture. Well, you see, I don't need a picture. Although I do ask you, I, re I require people to put a picture up because they need to be able to give something of themselves as well. All I really need is a name. That's it. I can read a name on a piece of paper. The Kundalini is not limited to the five senses not. Okay, it does its own thing. It has its own levels of senses. And, you know, anywhere from one to a one thousand, the Kundalini has many vectors of expression and experience upon the physical world through the Kundalini awakened individual. You can understand, you know, why so many people want to have Kundalini. And you can also understand why it often comes to people that don't want to have anything to do with it. You can see that those are the people that won't abuse or try to abuse those powers. You know, those, the people who come with this with amazing levels of respect and integrity and truth and surrender to the divine will, 
These are the people that have earned the presence of the direct divine within their lives. Um, you know, Jesus comes to people that have the kundalini. For you Christians out there, Jesus is very well. Jesus had the kundalini. Jesus appears. He appeared in this house, in the room right next to me over here. I'm staring at Amelia's painting that she gave us here. Right on the other side of that painting, Jesus came to a woman who had never, who was not a Christian, who didn't know who he was, and, and he left without telling her who he was. Okay? This stuff is real. This stuff is not make-believe. It's only make-believe for those who cannot handle the truth of the expanded reality. Now, let me go on with, with the uh, radiance here. Radiance is physical, divine, spiritual. It's part of this world, and yet it's not of this world. And because it's not of this world, partially, it doesn't, it does not, um, I'm looking for a word here, it doesn't have to comply with the laws of the physical universe. And it doesn't at all comply with them. It does to the certain extent that it's within the world, within the human being that is having the radiance. So yes, you know, the human being physical flesh, even even with the transformation into the divine, the physical flesh needs to be nurtured, needs to be exercised, needs to, to do all the different things that the physical flesh needs to do. But the kundalini itself is timeless, is ageless. It does not conform to the scientific method. And therefore, it does not conform to uh, the rules that, that we understand the science is setting up. You know, um, uh, you know, that doesn't sit well with, with a lot of folks because, you know, they're pretty much ensconced in science and science. And even on this cell phone I'm talking through is a, is a fabrication of science. But Kundalini does not require that at all. When you sit in my chair here at the ashram, you receive the radiance of years and years and years of me doing kundalini work in this chair. So you receive the radiance, the direct, unadulterated uh, radiance that this chair emits, or any chair that I sit in. Amelia, are you still awake? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> have you you sat in yes. this chair here, did you? Yes, on more than one occasion. I did, of course. And, um, yes, do you want me to speak about that? I, When you sure. sit in the chair, it has a real effect. It has had a real effect upon me. And I have felt it in different ways. Sometimes, you know, it's just... I've meditated in the chair, and it has been just a beautiful meditation. Other times I have felt, you know, my tingling in my body. I have felt the energy actually, you know, the radiance move into my body, move up through my body, move through my spine, move right up through my body, through my head. Um, it has affected me in very many different ways. But there is always a beautiful, beautiful feeling from being in that chair. It's one of love and it's one of peace. And I would recommend for everybody to visit the ashram in that chair. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, and I'll extend I'll extend that invitation to everybody who's listening to this. If you want to come to the ashram, you can do so. You can email me at kfire for all that's K as in Kundalini or King. K F as in uh, Fred I as in iPad, um, R as in Radiance, E as in uh, Emily, F as in Fred, O as in Oscar, R as in Radiance, 
A is in Apple, L is in Love, L is in Love. K Fire for All at Yahoo.com. So K F I R E F O R A L L at Yahoo.com, and that's all lowercase. So you're all. And the ten, the ten years. Oh, sorry. The ten years as well. It's I feel the Kundalini within me respond. I can feel my my own Kundalini. Um, when I'm sitting in that chair, it responds every time. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. Uh, I'm certainly not replacing your kundalini. Your kundalini is responding to my kundalini that is sitting in the chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, and um, there's another comment here as well in the in the chat room from Sadhvi, and it's about the glistening. And she yeah. says that she has had the glistening of the light on leaves and bushes in nature. And she's had it two times, once when she was at at an ashram in India and once two years ago when she had the Kundalini awakening. And it was not just in nature, it was with people as well, and she even had to wear sunglasses. So that's her comment on the the glistening. And actually I remember... I'm 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 surprised the sunglasses worked at all. (laughs) <laughs> I remember it's, it's, it's as well. It's transphysical. Yeah. I remember as well when you were speaking earlier a time where for a couple of days I was conscious, like physically aware of absolutely every single blade of grass, every leaf on the tree. And it was constant and it went on, you know, even driving the car. As I would be driving the car, I was aware of every single branch on trees. It was it was an amazing experience. Now it's not with me now. It it, it was Thank just God that for you time. and your family. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an amazing thing, and and to <laughs> yeah, I know, and to actually sit though, to actually when you know to be. Quiet and to look, it was it was amazing. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you for for thank you, Sadvi, for your comment and 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 to you as well, Amelia. Thank you for your description. So yeah, so the the radiance sticks to physicality. It will stick to a chair. It'll stick to a doorknob. It will stick on a glass or utensils, silverware on a wrench or a pencil or or a keypad, it will stick to that. And it will have physiological effect on the next person who may or may not be awakened that, uh, that comes in contact with it. So once again, this is another reason for you to be very, very mindful of your thoughts and your emotions and your feelings. And it doesn't mean that you can't get angry. It just means that you can't stay angry. You don't get to stay angry. I know, I know. I'm a hard line here about that. But you don't get to stay angry. You can, however, stay joyful. You can stay feeling good. Matter of fact, that will become a permanent place of expression for many of you. If you practice any of these teachings, if you accept any of these understandings, your entryway into permanent levels of joy and bliss are being constructed by you and your practicing of these teachings. The activation of your kundalini Okay. So I want to encourage you. Questions? Please do. Whenever you're, yeah. Uh, Fashti asks a question. um, Can one perceive the radiance emitting from the fingertips? Yes. Fashti, hello, hello, hello. Good. Thank you. Thank you for listening, Fashti. It's good to hear you. I can't see you, but it's good to hear your question. Um, Yeah, one can perceive. Perceive it to a degree. Um, One can feel it more than perceive it, though. You can feel it, and as you feel it, your perception of it will increase. 
um, doing the finger lock, or if you if you can follow one of the uh, Qigong models of uh, 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 four finger tip to thumb tip, middle finger tip to thumb tip, ring finger tip to thumb tip, uh, pinky finger tip to thumb tip, and then back the other way, and then going back and forth over and over and over and over and over. That's a Qigong model. Actually, and you can actually do a, a, a meditation with forefinger to thumb tip and then middle finger to thumb tip and ring finger to thumb tip and then uh, little finger to thumb tip and then back on. This actually works on all of the fingertip chakras. And so I'll recommend this for anybody who really wants to to grow the activation and the exploration uh, and, and tactility of the energies through the uh, the fingertips. Another another way to do this, and I'll suggest you do this. It's going to be hard for me to explain, though. I may have to make a video about this. Um, what it is is you take you 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 put your fingernails of your fingers, not your thumb, uh, and you put all your fingers together. I set the phone down here. You put all your fingers together on both hands, and then you lay the fingernails against the fingernails of the opposite hand together. And then you go up and down, rubbing the fingernails together. Okay? And you do this for less than five minutes, but you do it every day. And even if you do it for just a few seconds, you're going to feel this tremendous vibration in the fingertips of your fingers. I mean, it's, it's palpable. And this will also serve as an activation point towards a greater um, uh, perception of the energies that are coming out of your finger chakras, your fingertip chakras. Thank you, Fasti. Good question, as always. Hey, Lo has a question, and it is why she why she should I, one second now, why, she, why should we not talk about Kundalini, mention it at all to anyone, even those we trust, such as close family or friends? So why Who should we this? not talk about Kundalini? This is Halo. Halo? Yeah, H E Y L O is how it's spelled. Yes, Halo. H E Y L O. Hello, Halo. Hello. Yes, excellent question. Wonderful question. Um, Kundalini is far outside of the reality matrix of almost everybody in your life. It is so strong and it's so pervasive and it is so dominant for a time in a person's early uh, um, uh, activation that its presence uh, will typically frighten uh, those around you, your parents, your friends, your your spouse, and they, you know, this will inevitably lead to a 911 call or a trip to the hospital for you, where, you know, in the hands of the medical industry, uh, you will be poked, prodded, tested, uh, given drugs, and in some cases thrown into a psych ward. And in order to save a person, and, and I know, now, now I, I know where you're going to go with this. I know that you would never think that your friends or family would do that type of thing. Never in a million years would they do that to you. But they would. They would because they would be doing it as a gift of love to you, thinking that they were helping you, thinking that you had a severe illness and the doctors are going to call it bipolarism with severe schizoidal tendencies and your mom and your dad will go down there and they'll cry and they'll weep and they'll hold you and they'll just say, take the drugs, honey. It's okay. You know, this will be a very painful thing for them. And they'll think that they're helping you. And they're doing as much damage as possibly could be done to a newly awakened individual. That's why you don't talk about it with them. It's not because you want to keep something from them. It's because you 
Some people, it's just, they're just not ready yet to have it. They're not ready for the amount of phenomena that's going to occur. You know, I had another student come up to me the other day. Yeah, I just put up with my ex-wife. She, she thought I was being, what's the word, um, uh, possessed by demons. She thought I was being possessed by demons. Now, if he'd have just been able to keep it to himself, which he didn't know, he didn't. I mean, you know, he didn't have this information at the time. You know, he maybe would still be married to this person. And not, all, not yes. Um, hello, is actually Lauren is her name, and she says she's wondering. She says. I think it's more likely that they would do that if they didn't know it was Kundalini. And she uh, says that her mom has come... Her Go mom ahead. is worried about her. So I am trying to get her to be informed on the issue so that she doesn't think I'm in drugs. Ah. And she, she's lucky well, well, to have some people well, close let's, to her who are spiritual. Let's just hang on a second now. <laughs> If you're con- now, let, let's let's go a little further into this, Lauren. And thank you. Nice to meet you, Lauren. Um, if you think that your mom thinks you're on drugs and you're actually not, then I'm going to doubly uh, guide you not to tell her about this. If she can't tell when her daughter is on drugs and when her daughter is not even within Kundalini, uh, especially within a Kundalini scenario, this is not a person, you know, who you really want to talk about with this. This is this is someone who will take you to the hospital quite quickly, thinking that you're on drugs. This is not a person that you need to have a Kriya in front of that can resemble a, a, a seizure. It's a very, very short hop for the unawakened mind to go from Kriya to seizure. Oh, she says it's a Kriya or whatever the heck that is. It looks like a seizure to me. Call 911. People don't understand it. You know, I've had plenty, I've warned people not to do this over and over and over again. And then I'll get a call. I'll get a last-minute call from the family right before the ambulance shows up with the, with the straight jacket. And that's a real deal, you know. They put you in a straitjacket. And, uh, you know, is there anything you can do to help him? He keeps saying that you know what's going on. We don't think you do. We don't think, you know, you know anything. We think you're just some sort of a hoodlum on the web that he's been talking to. But if there's any way you can help him, go ahead. And I. Chris and Lauren. Yeah. Lauren says that no, and um, she says, this is difficult for you, I know. She says, no, no, her mother knows that she's not on drugs, actually, and which is why she is worried. And, and so Lauren feels if she tells her about the Kundalini, that it would help. Well, here's, here's what I'll suggest that you do then, um, Lauren. Uh, send your mother to the website, the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com website, and on that website, the first thing that I have on that website is is a is a, an experience of a spinal sweep. That's the very first thing you read. It's on the cover page of that website. You don't have to go anywhere with it. Just scroll down, and you'll see transformation into the divine awareness. I think that's what it is. Is that what it is? Transformation into the divine experience or something like that. Have her read that. And depending upon how she handles that uh, will be a good guide for how she handles what may be occurring for you, Lauren. I will suggest that you keep any uh, information minimal to or to a degree. Don't go fantastic with her on this. You know, often people want to go, oh, you know, my fantastic phenomena... You know, and it's just a mild form of self-aggrandizement, and and uh, it, it actually is a terrible thing to do because it strikes fear 
in the hearts of those who are hearing it. And so go very, very gentle with her, Lauren. Very gentle with her. Uh, I, I take it you're living with her at home. Um, she's actually, she says here, Chris, and, and okay, I will, to what you've been saying. She is happy to sit and watch videos with me and read things while she is visiting. She is still jet-lagged. She's still jet-lagged. Yeah, yeah, and then she says, she and I were walking our spiritual journey together when I did live with her. So she's obviously not living with her anymore. Um, no. Good, good, that's good. Uh, so, yeah, as long as she's not in charge of your health care, Lauren, uh, that's the main thing. I mean, not that you have to be in charge of someone's health care to, to do a, uh, you know, a uh, psychological kidnapping of them. But uh, as long as, and, and if you can be very, very gentle, don't talk to her while she's jet lagged. Let her, let her get some sleep. Have her go to the YouTube channel that I mentioned earlier in the show. Watch some of those YouTubes, you know, really kind of get an idea uh, about who this Christian person is, number one, because, you know, nobody knows who I am. Um, and that's that's good. That's <laughs> the people who need to know are the ones who know. Um, and then take her to that web page. Let her read the web page. Um, you can call me. Uh, come to my, send me an email from the Kfire for all at yahoo dot com, and and if you want to have a Skype session, we can have a Skype session. I mean, there's many different ways that that we can gently, gently, gently bring her into this understanding. Most people that do not have Kundalini cannot understand it because it steps too far outside of their basic understanding of reality. Those who have kundalini or those who want kundalini, they're already looking for that step outside their normal uh, reality. But those who are not looking or are not having have no reason. You know, their five senses is what they got and this is what they're going to work with. So if you're saying something like bilocation and, and transformation into a divine reality, oh my gosh, well, okay, honey, um, sure, I'll read it. So just be calm and and loving and and gracious with how you handle this information. I do stick to what I say about not telling people, though. Uh, more people have gone into the psych ward for telling people than people have gone into the psych ward for not telling people. Okay. So that's basically uh, where I'm going with that. Uh, it's important for for your kundalini not to be in the psych ward. Okay, so she says thank you, and she'll watch videos with her, and you have Skype with Lauren before, two times before. So. Two times before, really? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, oh, I know who this is. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's all making sense now. Yeah, but Lauren, you know, you got other things going on too that you're not seeing. She, she's in Germany. She's in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Her. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Lauren. To be to be honest with the other listeners, you've got other things that are going on that are outside of the Kundalini. You know, different uh, uh, healthcare concerns, different things that that uh, would. Uh, cause a, a parent to have uh, levels of concern that uh, that are not Kundalini related. So you you know this isn't all about the Kundalini with regards to your mom, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Any other questions, Amelia? Hello. Yes, Chris, and Fash, she has a question. I have to scroll back up because I was following Lauren's conversation. One second. It was about, um, it was about 10 other people. One second now. 
He was asking, yes, can others experience the radiance as heat or a rise in temperature? And the reason that he says this is that he recently went in for an annual physical examination and the doctor and nurse were complaining um, that the room was feeling hot, whereas Vashti felt perfectly normal, actually cool, since he was actually naked. <laughs> he was obviously yeah. without clothes for the examination. So that's his question. Can other people feel the temperature change? Well, what they feel, they feel a, they feel the radiance, uh, but their their mind will process it as heat. Their mind will process it as heat, and and as, as the mind processes a, a sense, so does the body follow up, and so they'll feel hot. Um, the fact that you're feeling just fine just means that you know you're the one that's giving out the radiance. Uh, yeah, yeah, they can feel it for sure. Sure. The other thing is, is when you're sitting next to a Kundalini person in the car, for instance, the the windows next to the Kundalini person are always going to fog up. Always. That defroster is just going to have to go on. Doesn't have to go on hot, by the way. It can go on air conditioning, uh, cold, but it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot, and that's. That is also a manifestation of the radiance uh, coming from the Kundalini. So, yes, absolutely, Bhaji. Absolutely. Other other questions? No, that's it. Lauren just says, yes, um, she trusts you. You know better than her in some instances, and um, she wants to be upfront with her mother for the reasons that you mentioned there, and she will talk about it with you later. And a big smiley face. <laughs> so there are no other questions at this time. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, and I'm going to tell everybody here on the ra- on the radio. Lauren is this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman, and she has Kundalini. She has Kundalini, and and yet for the longest time she didn't know what was going on. She didn't know what she had, you know. And the MDs are saying, "Oh, you've got this." symptom and this uh, disease and you got oh you got that one over there too and oh here let me let's give you some drugs here we go drug 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 and this this is the typical medical response to a person with kundalini this is what you're going to run into it's going to be you know from the heavy drugs to the strongest of tranquilizers uh, get a coat and you know you'll you'll constantly be walking around in a blur for the rest of your life if you let those the, the medical uh, industrial complex into your kundalini awakening they don't understand it once they do understand it then they'll still want to give you drugs but at least it won't be as you know at least they'll have some understanding of it uh, so yeah yeah uh, Lauren's great. She's she's first class, top notch, all the way, all the way. And um, I have to tell you all that I'm getting a a battery signal on my phone, and so I'm going to end this conversation gracefully rather than getting cut off. Uh, So I would like to thank uh, Amelia Centara. Thank you for uh, putting the show together. Thank you, John, and and, uh, another hello to Helena, and may... uh, May your own divine grace uh, uh, follow you back to to New Zealand, if that's where you're going. And everybody, Fashti and Lauren and and Deva Sadvi and everybody who may be listening, uh, may the love and grace and beauty of the divine Kundalini flow within you. And may you accept that flow without any resistance whatsoever. If you wish to get a hold of me, please do so. If you wish to get a hold of uh, of Amelia Centara, please do so. Amelia, can you give them your email address? It's kundalinimatters at gmail.com. Kundalinimatters at gmail.com. Amelia, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And you, Chris, and um, thanks to everybody. Bye. All right, everyone. Good night. Good night.